Today is day 114 of the Read the Bible in 365 days. Uh, today we're going to read 2 Samuel 19 through 20, Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 23. Chapter 19. And it was told Joab, Behold, the king weepeth and mourneth for Absalom. And the victory that day was turned into mourning unto all the people. For the people heard say that day how the king was grieved for his son. And the people gat them by stealth that day into the city as people being ashamed still away when they flee in battle. But the king covered his face and the king cried with a loud voice, O my son, Absalom, O Absalom, my son, my son. And Joab came into the house of the king and said, Thou hast shamed this day the faces of all thy servants, which this day have saved thy life and the lives of thy sons and of thy daughters and the lives of thy wives and the lives of thy concubines. In that thou lovest thine enemies and hatest thy friends, for thou hast declared this day that thou regardest neither princes nor servants. For this day I perceive that if Absalom had lived and we all we had died this day, then it had pleased thee well. Now therefore rise, go forth, and speak comfortably unto thy servants. For I swear by the Lord, if thou go not forth, there will not tarry one with thee this night, and that will be worse unto thee than all the evil that befell thee from thy youth unto now. And the king arose and sat in the gate, and they told unto all the people, saying, Behold, the king doth sit in the gate, and all the people came before the king for Israel had fled every man to his tent. And all the people <clears throat> were at strife throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, The king saved us out of the hand of our enemies, and he delivered us out of the hand of the Philistines, and now he has fled out of the land of Ab for Ab Absalom. Absalom, whom we anointed over us, is dead in battle. Now therefore, why speak ye not a word of bringing the king back? And King David sent to Zadok, to Abiathar, the priest, saying, speaking to the elders of Judah, saying, Why are ye the last to bring the king back to his house, seeing the speech of all Israel is come to the king, even to his house? Ye are my brethren, ye are my bones and my flesh. Wherefore, then are ye the last to bring back the king, and say ye to Amasa, Art thou not of my bone and of my flesh? God do so to me, and more also, if thou be not captain of the host before me continually in the room of Joab. And he bowed and he bowed the heart of all the men of Judah, even as the heart of one man, so that they sent his word unto the king, Return thou and all thy servants. So the king returned and came to Judah, and Judah came to Gilgal to go to meet the king, to conduct the king over Jordan. And Shimei, Shimei the son of Gera, a Benjamite, which was of Beharim, hastened and came down with the men of Judah to meet the king, meet King David. And there were a thousand men of Benjamin with him, and Ziba, the servant of the house of Saul, and his fifteen sons and his twenty servants with him, and they went over Jordan before the king. And there went over a ferry boat to carry over the king's household and to do what he thought good. And Shimei, the son of Gera, fell down before the king as he was come over Jordan, and said unto the king, Let not my lord impute iniquity unto me, neither do thou remember that which thy servant did perversely the day that my lord the king went out of Jerusalem, that the king should take it to his heart. For thy servant doth know that I have sinned. Therefore, behold, I am come the first day of all the house of Joseph to go down to meet my lord the king. And Abishai, the son of Zeruiah answered and said, Should not Shemai be put to death for this because he cursed the Lord's anointed? And David said, What have I to do with you, ye sons of Zeruiah, and ye, that ye should this day be adversaries unto me? Should there any man be put to death this day in Israel? For do not I know that I am this day king over Israel? Therefore the king said unto Shemai, Thou should not die, and the king swear unto him. And Mephishbosheth, the son of Saul came down to meet the king and had neither dressed his feet nor trimmed his beard nor washed his clothes from the day the king departed until the day he came in peace. And it came to pass when he was come to Jerusalem to meet the king that the king said unto him, 
Wherefore winnest thou not thou with me, Mephishbosheth? And he answered and said, My lord, O king, my servant deceived me, for thy servant said, I will saddle me an ass, that I may ride thereon and go to the king, because thy servant is lame. And he had slandered thy servant unto my lord the king, for my lord the king is an angel of God. Do therefore what is good in thine eyes. For all of my father's house were but dead, men before my lord the king. Yet didst thou set my, thy servant among them that did eat at thine own table. What right therefore have I yet to cry any more unto the king? And the king said unto him, Why speakest thou any more of thy matters? I have said, Thou and Ziba divide the land. And Mephishbosheth said unto the king, Yeah, let him take all for as much as my lord the king is come again in peace unto his own house. And Berzile, the Gileadite, came down from Rogolim and went over Jordan with the king to conduct him over Jordan. Now, Berzile was a very aged man, even his fourscore years old, and he had provided the king of sustenance while he lay at Mehadim, for he was a very great man. And the king said unto Barzillai, Come thou over with me, and I will feed thee with me in Jerusalem. And Barzillai said unto the king, How long have I to live that I should go up with the king unto Jerusalem? I am this day fourscore years old, and can, and can I discern between good and evil? Can thy servant taste what I eat or what I drink? Can I hear any more the voice of singing men and singing women? Wherefore, then should thy servant be yet a burden unto my lord the king. Thy servant would go a little way over Jordan with the king, and why should the king recompense it, with, recompense it me with such a reward? Let thy servant, I pray thee, turn back again, that I may die in my own city and be buried by the grave of my father and of my mother. But behold, Thy servant Chimham, let him go over with my lord the king and do to him what shall seem good unto me to thee. And the king answered, Chimham should go over with me, and I would do to him that which shall seem good unto thee, and whatsoever thou should require of me, that I would do for thee. And all the people went over Jordan, and when the king was come over, the king kissed Barzile and blessed him. And he returned unto his own place. Then the king went on to Gilgal, the Chim and Chimham went on with him, and all the people of Judah conducted the king, and also half the people of Israel. And behold, all the men of Israel came to the king and said unto the king, Why have our brethren, the men of Judah, stolen thee away, and have brought the king and his household, and all David with him over Jordan? And all the men of Judah answered, the men of Israel, because the king is near of kin to us. Wherefore, then be ye angry for this matter. Have ye we eaten all at all of the king's cost, or hath he given us any gift? And the men of Israel answered the men of Judah and said, We have ten parts in the king, and we have also more right in David than ye. When, why then did ye despise us that our advice should not be first had in bringing back our king. And the words of the men of Judah were fiercer than the words of the men of Israel. Chapter 20. And there happened to be there a man, uh, Bileah, whose name was Sheba, the son of Bichri, a Benjamite. And he blew a trumpet and said, We have no part in David, neither have we inherited the son of Jesse. Every man to his tents, O Israel. So every man of Israel went up from after David and followed Sheba, the son of Bichri. But the men of Judah clave unto their king from Jordan even to Jerusalem. And David came to his house at Jerusalem, and the king took the ten women, his concubines, whom he had left to keep the house, and put them in war, and fed them, but went not in unto them. So they were shut up until the day of their death, living in widowhood. Then said the king of Amasa, Assemble me the men of Judah, within three days, and be thou here present. 
So Amasa went to assemble the men of Judah, but he tarried longer than the set time which he had appointed him. And David said to Abishai, Now shall Sheba the son of Bichri do us more harm than did Absalom. Take thou thy Lord's servant and pursue after him, lest he get him fenced cities and escape us. And there went out after him Joab's men, and the Cherethites, and the Pilathites, and all the mighty men. And they went out of Jerusalem to pursue after Sheba the son of Bichri. When they were at the great stone, which is in Gibeon, Amasa went before them, and Joab's garment that he had put on was girded unto him, and upon it a girdle with a sword fastened upon his loins in the sheath thereof. And as he went forth, it fell out. And Joab said to Amasa, Art thou in health, my brother? And Joab took Amasa by the beard with the right hand to kiss him. But Amasa took no heed to the sword that was in Joab's hand. So he smote him therewith in the fifth rib and shed out his bowels on the ground and struck him not again, and he died. So Joab and Abishai's brother pursued after Sheba, the son of Bichri. And one of Joab's men stood by him and said, He that favored Joab and he that is for David, let him go after Joab. And Amasa wallowed in blood in the midst of the highway. And when the men saw that all the people stood still, he removed Amasa out of the highway into the field and cast a cloth upon him when he saw that every one that came by stood still. When he was removed out of the highway, all the people went on after Joab to pursue after Sheba the son of Bichri. And he went through all the tribes of Israel unto Abel and to Bethmach, Bethmach, Bethmachah, and all the Berites. And they were gathered together and went also after him. And they came and besieged him in Abel of Bethmachah. And they cast up a bank against the city, and it stood in the trench. And all the people that were with Joab battered the wall to throw it down. Then cried a wise woman out of the city, Hear, hear, say I pray you unto Joab, Come hither, come near hither, that I may speak with thee. And when he was come near unto her, the woman said, Art thou Joab? And he answered, I am he. Then said unto him, Hear the words of thine handmaid. And he answered, I do hear. Then she spake, saying, that work, spake, saying, they were wont to speak in old times, saying, They shall surely ask counsel of Abel, and so shall, and so they ended the matter. I am one of them that are peaceable and faithful in Israel. Thou seekest to destroy a city and a mother in Israel. Why would thou swallow up the inheritance of the Lord? And Joab answered and said, Far be it from far be it from me that I shall swallow up or destroy. The matter is not so, but a man of Mount Ephraim, Sheba the son of Bichri by name, hath lifted up his hand against the king, even against David. Deliver him only, and I will depart from the city. And the woman said unto Joab, Behold, his head should be thrown to thee over the wall. Then the woman went unto all the people in her wisdom, and they cut off the head of Sheba the son of Bichri, and cast it out to Joab. And he blew a trumpet, and they retired from the city every man to his tent. And Joab returned to Jerusalem unto the king. Now Joab was all over the host of Israel, and Benai, the son of Jehoiada, was over the Cherethites and over the Pelethites, and Adoram was over the tribute. And Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahulud, was recorder. And Sheba was scribe, and Zadok, the Abiathar, were the priest. And Ira, also, the Jerite was a chief ruler about David. Luke chapter 18, verse 1 through 23. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not be faint, saying, There was a city, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard men, yet because this willow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. 
And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. And he spake this parable unto a certain, which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up in the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee, the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as the publican. I fast twice in the week, and I give tithes of all that I possess, and the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself should be abased, and he that humbled himself should be exalted. And they brought unto him also infants, that he would touch them. But when his disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus said unto them, and said, but Jesus called unto them, and said, Suffer little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever should not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, shall in no wise enter therein. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good, save one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandment, Do not commit adultery, Do not kill, do not steal. Do not bear false witness unto thy father and thy mother. And he said, All these have I kept from my youth up. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing, sell all that thou hast, and strip it unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich.